I'll be honest, as someone who has spent my life savings on modern digital camera gear, I would rather take a photo with that stuff than a Polaroid. I can control all my settings, get a clean, sharp image, and edit it all I want afterwards. Plus, I'm not paying per shot with film. With how far camera technology has come, especially in the past 10 years, it's kind of funny something like Polaroid would make a comeback, but still, there's no denying there is something special about physical film photos and the simplicity of instant film. There's no fussing with it, what you get is what you get, even if it doesn't come out quite right. With recent hipster crazes, vinyl, lo-fi music, and of course, film have all been touted as charming and nostalgic with their imperfections and graininess. And today, I want to look at and shoot some Polaroids of my own and see what the hype is all about. Plus, I'll do a small comparison to those new Fuji Instax cameras. I have here a Polaroid Sun 600, though as far as I can tell, it's pretty much the same as most other 600 models. For some reason, they have this thing where they just came up with a billion different names for the same camera, so this is also called a One Step Flash, a Spirit 600, a Light Mixter 630, a Cool Cam 600, and many more names. The only real differences are some of the older ones don't have a flash and some of the later ones have autofocus. But basically, if it's a 600 or 6 something, then it's in this model series. But with that, let's focus on what I have with me today. First impressions of the camera, it is very bulky and kind of looks like a plastic whale. Uh, but as soon as you open it, the aesthetic is undeniably retro and cool. Silver and black aren't the most vibrant colors, but it's still bold and pops. And of course, the red accents and iconic logo go a long way to complete the look. It's the kind of retro I particularly like, with nice, sharp, and boxy angles. Plus, you have these grills, which are often seen on lenses to reduce flaring, but here I'm almost certain they do nothing but look cool. Uh, the last noteworthy design choice I love are the big, almost cartoonish looking lenses and flash. Overall, the camera is truly a work of aesthetic art versus more modern cameras that favor ergonomics at the cost of having really undefined black curves. But for real, I don't think they even considered that people have to hold this camera when designing it. You kind of just have to wing it every time you pick it up. Now, if we turn our focus to the back of the camera, I have to admit, any compliments I gave the front do not apply here. It's very strange, especially the way the viewfinder just sticks out. Another weird thing is the original strap is actually built into the camera. You can't remove it without cutting it off. The last real note as I talk about the design is the camera is a bit on the cheap side build-wise. It's overall solid, but there's definitely lots of creaking and shifting of the plastic pieces as you move it around. This is just in comparison to earlier all-metal cameras from the decade before it, but obviously these two styles of cameras are aimed at completely different audiences, so a little unfair. Still, worth noting though. Again, I do love the look of the camera, but it definitely does have some questionable design choices. One of the big appeals of Polaroids are their ease of use. First thing you gotta do is load the film. You pop the bottom off with this little switch, then remove the old film pack by pulling on the tab. Then you place the new one in with a firm press and it'll shoot out the cover card. Uh, the film packs actually have the batteries built into them, which is kind of interesting. Once you got film inside, you'll see a counter on the back telling you how many shots you have left. It'll go down every time you take a picture. Uh, one weird note is it starts at 10, but the film packs you can buy today only have eight shots in them. To take a photo, it's as simple as just looking through the viewfinder. Then you wanna half press the shutter button to charge the flash up for a moment. There will be a red light inside the viewfinder showing this. Uh, once it's off, you can fully press the shutter button to take your photo. After that, your picture will automatically come out with a loud whir of the motor. Now, despite popular belief, you don't actually want to shake the photo as it develops because this will mix up the chemicals and you'll actually lose some detail. Uh, the official instructions do say to instead lay the photo face down so that it's dark. Uh, this will get you the best results. 
That is all the basic information on taking a picture, but there are in fact a couple things you may want to know to get the best image you can. First thing is the focus. Now, later cameras did have autofocus, but this one here does not, so it is fixed focus. This kind of sucks because it means you are stuck with the sharpest results being around four to five feet. Going further than this is fine, but I wouldn't go closer or it'll get blurry. There were actually some of these cameras that came with a close-up lens filter, though most of the time these are lost over the years. Though you can't do much about the focus, one thing you can mess with is the light meter. The camera actually has a built-in sensor to detect how much light there is and automatically adjust settings so your picture doesn't come out too bright or dark. But if your photos are coming out too bright or too dark in a certain scenario, you can actually adjust the switch on the front to brighten or darken the settings. It's actually kind of funny though, because all the switch actually does is move a little shade over the light sensor to block or let in more light. I mean, it works though, I guess. The only downside to it though is you don't actually know if your photo is going to be too bright or too dark until you take it and then wait around for it to develop. So yeah, that's all there really is to using the camera. Super simple. And now I'm going to go shoot some stuff on it and see what I can come up with. Shooting on an old school Polaroid is definitely a good time. Now, I'm not going to pretend I got the most mind blowing shots on my first go around, but I tried to get a decent variety of stuff to test different things. I also kept the light meter setting to the middle just for simplicity. I also, of course, kept my photos turned over or in my pocket while they developed, as mentioned. As the film pack itself says, it's best to shoot in bright light, so mainly outdoors during the day. You can see this shot does this best as it's nice and bright. This shot of a taco truck was taken closely after, but you can see it didn't come out quite as nice since the truck was partially in the shade, so you can see how much the mix of sun and shade can affect a photo. This shot here though shows you can have a bit too much light and end up with a photo that is a bit washed out, uh, but still not too bad. You'll also notice almost all my shots have weird imperfections on the bottom of the image, but this one is the most noticeable. This photo was taken at the same time as the last and is supposed to be of a seagull on a rock, which you can kind of see in the middle. It looks like the bright rocks up front tricked the light meter and made the water and further rocks too dark. Again, things you should just take into consideration when shooting, I guess. I of course had to take a portrait as well. I got a shot of my girlfriend and our guinea pig. This was shot indoors and it probably would have been better with the blinds open and by the window to help brighten things up. This photo of my car and I was shot on a cloudy day so you can still get good shots as long as it's bright enough. The clouds actually made the lighting much more even versus harsh sun creating lots of shadows so it's kind of an advantage. The last photo I kinda knew wasn't gonna turn out. I wanted to test a night shot and thought one of a gas station would be bright enough and cool. Uh, though to my eyes the gas station was bright as day, the film did not agree. And that's my first pack of film right there. Again, I think if I were to get another round I could take these tests into consideration and learn from it to get some much cooler shots. I can't deny shooting on an old Polaroid is fun. It's an experience and you get a physical copy of your art or memory to hold on to. Though as mentioned, I also own two other instant film cameras, both modern day Fujifilm Instax ones. Though the Polaroid does give the largest image, I just have to say the 600 film is honestly ridiculously expensive. At the time of filming, it costs over twice as much per shot as the Instax square ones. Just doing a quick comparison, you can see the Polaroid is a bit warmer while the Instax is cooler. Also the Instax lens is actually a bit wider, so I had to move closer in order to line the shots up the same. The big differences I see though is the Instax is sharper and more contrasty while the Polaroid is softer in both detail and contrast. Like the Instax shadows are darker and the highlights are brighter. One weird thing with Instax though that I've seen in other photos as well is when something gets really bright like the sun or a reflection, it turns black like you can see in the TV glass. On this other example, the Polaroid is actually colder while the Instax is warmer, so 
My thinking is the Instax film is actually warmer, but the camera has a colder flash, if that makes sense, since this photo is outdoors where the flash isn't as strong. Again, you can see the differences in contrast and colors though. The Instax is more defiant, while the Polaroid is subtler. Each honestly has their own pros and cons for different scenarios. I've shot more Instax over the years as I've just owned it longer, but I feel like it is a bit more forgiving to get a decent shot, plus it also develops in like a couple minutes and doesn't need to be kept in the dark. One thing I will say that I kinda disliked about the Polaroid is charging the flash takes a good moment and can actually make you miss a shot if you need it instantly. The Instax, however, does have an instant flash. It really comes down to personal preference for style and size. I like the Polaroid look, but I personally would rather have smaller photos that cost less because you can take more photos that way, so it's probably the more beginner-friendly option too. Also, I haven't tried the newer Polaroid models that have come out recently, so those may be a different story, but I'm just going off of what I have here to compare. But even with all that, it does still win in one regard. It's the thing I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's the fact that the camera just has charm to it. Not to say the Fujis don't, but they're just different. The Polaroid has the retro style. It's legitimately old and it looks like it. It's got the name recognition and legacy. Shooting on it is just fun. So yes, the Instax is more practical and easier to recommend, but the Polaroid still has its own place. They're similar, but not the same. It gives its own unique look. Obviously, when shooting film cameras, it's not necessarily about the best image, and it is sometimes just about the character. And even if the film is expensive, I am happy that cameras like these can see a resurgence in popularity today. There's nothing sadder than having a camera whose film format is obsolete and lost to time. It's good to know, after its decades of life, it has yet to take its last photo.